So last week you guys voted for the warm colors the most, so we'll be working on that. The first texture that I wanted to make was the sand texture, so I wanted to kind of get a outline of where the actual um, dark shades and light shades would be, and then we could finer detail the each part. So I was just adding a little bit of noise around just to kind of get it making it look more pixelated, which um, if you think of sand in general, it's generally more pixelated. Uh, because of all the grains and sand and stuff like that. So uh, then it was just a matter of basically playing around with the shapes, kind of blending things in and getting it to have enough detail where it would look good. At this point, I was I took off the grid texture or the grid overlay so I could actually see what I was doing because I needed the finer, um, a better view of what I was working on. The grid pattern is actually really good for pre-planning and stuff like that but uh, later on when you actually need to see what you're doing it's best to actually turn it off um, it's a little grid pattern next to the ruler up on the top corner there that I usually use but uh, overall I was happy with the texture I was just making sure that it was seamless and then ready to go so the next texture that I wanted to do was the same kind of shades and stuff like that so this was going to be for the stone uh, it just made more sense to have the sand and stone the same texture because sand is basically just smaller rocks of the stone. So I thought I would uh, create the same texture, but um, make it different in a way that it was more unique for its pixels and stuff like that. So this is more of like a kind of like a shale kind of looking texture. Uh, compared to what it was before. So I wanted to kind of make sure that it was blending in properly. Uh, I didn't want it too pixelated because then it would be harder to just uh, basically see the difference between the two textures and stuff. So the sand and the stone itself. So I started kind of blending in some solid shapes just to kind of make it so it was a little bit more even. Uh, this you'll basically see that in just a couple seconds but i didn't want it uh so pixelated and stuff and the first thing that i wanted to do is make sure that it was actually seamless and looked proper when for the shading and then i started working on the kind of filling out some solid actual pixels and stuff and this just gives it the impression that it's a different texture than more smooth so and I was pretty happy with the overall look of it. Just some minor tweaking that needed to be done for the pixels and stuff. And outside of that, it was pretty good to go. But um, yeah, it, it looks very uh, kind of like a shale rock. So the next thing that I needed to do was just basically import the textures, get that all situated so we could bring it into M Creator. So I was just importing the block as a block texture so we could set up the blocks. The next thing that I needed to do was set up the stone texture. So I just basically, or stone block, pardon me. Uh, so we just basically set up the stone properties and imported the textures for the stone. And then we could actually set the uh, main properties for it. So making sure that the hardness and resistance are the same as the Minecraft stone. And then I just made sure that some other settings, like making sure that it requires a pickaxe to actually break, as well as uh, requiring a certain tier of item, which is, I believe, one. Uh, I can't remember what stone requires. I think it's wood, but we'll fix that later. Um, yeah, and then what we did was I just set the, the color on the map and make sure that entities render it as something that they can't actually go through so that was the main thing other than that all the other properties were pretty much the find the way that we were all right so next what we worked on was in making the sand block so once we get the sand block done we can actually update the biomes and stuff but uh, we needed to make sure that the properties and the material and all the other things were the same for what regular sand is. So I did forget a couple things though. Uh, I forgot to enable gravity. Um, one of those things that we'll fix probably in the next episode, but uh, along with the tool for harvesting the stone itself. So. 
but uh, I made sure that it required the, or I didn't actually check to require a, a shovel. It doesn't really need a shovel, I don't think. It can be broken with your hand as well, so that might work. And just the color on the map and making sure that it's blocked as well for entities so they don't try going through it for pathfinding. And then I wanted to actually set up the spawning so it will kind of generate underground as well. Similar to how dirt generates underground with the um, vanilla worlds. So basically I just wanted to kind of generate it in a un, uh, the, the old method for generation, big clumps. And then I just kind of adjusted the properties for it to generate in after selecting my gen uh, my dimension. Once I've done that, I basically just set the height and then I was pretty much good to go. So it'll basically generate anywhere from the top of the world, the top of the world to the bottom of the world. Once I did that, I needed to actually generate dirt to do the same thing. So I just basically added it to the dimension that we had and adjusted the uh, block to replace. So I wanted it to replace the stone. And then I basically set up the properties, same as the, um, the sand itself. I then updated the dimension settings for adding the stone. And lastly, updated the sand block for the biome. So another thing that you guys wanted for a suggestion was basically to implement the kind of like effect. So when they have an effect and are given the effect, they kind of travel to the dimension rather than sleeping in a bed. So I decided to work on that, uh, needed to tweak some of the code. And that's basically what we're going to be working on next. So I created an effects folder so we can put other effects under here. And then what we could actually work on was adding a potion effect. So this will basically give us the curse for what we need. The next thing we needed was a texture for it. So we'll probably improve this later on. Finally, we could import that texture that we are using as a placeholder. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and give it a display name for what we're going to be basically rendering. And I, I needed to kind of figure out what I wanted to call it. So uh, I ended up just calling it um, the, the dimension and then curse and then basically uh, changing the settings a little bit. So we could um, generate in the proper way. And then I basically just set a potion effect color. So once I've done that, I needed to create a basically a trigger. So when the effect ends, we would basically trigger the event for going to the biome. So I needed to make up a way that we could actually integrate a couple of these features. So I knew I needed to move that block over to the other one. So basically when the player is given the effect, uh, the way that we have it, we are the, the effect itself, it will give them a, the positive variable. And once they have the positive variable, what we want to do is we want to make sure that some other conditions are met. So we want to uh, basically give the effect to the player when they actually kill a witch. So it'll pass it over to the um, the effect to actually transfer over to the biome and stuff like that. So I needed to update the effect, but then I remembered I didn't save it. So uh, I just gave it a d default one and then we could basically save it and update it here. But uh, once we do that, this will basically trigger the effect. The effect will trigger the player to go to the different biome. So that's basically how it will work. I ran a quick test just to see if the effect would work and it didn't. So we'll have to look at the code again. So I started going through all the procedures, kind of seeing what was going on. And then I realized that I didn't update the procedure that said I had to go to bed. So I needed to figure out what kind of global trigger I needed to assign this to, to make sure that the entity actually did travel. So I ended up looking for a player tick update so we could basically have it. So it will run every tick update, but I didn't want it basically testing every tick. 
So what I ended up doing was I created a condition where it will test only if the entity is basically in um, a world that is not the world that they're going to. So it should help with performance a little bit. Um, other than that, it, it, there's a few other things that I needed to make sure, but this should help with uh, most of the lag and stuff from running every tick uh, if they have the uh, variable set to true. So just a quick test to pop in game and just see if I can actually work and it immediately teleported me. So that was good because we already had the variable set to true. So it was just a matter of kind of going around the biome and seeing if there was any how the stone looked i'm really happy with the stone texture actually it looks really good it feels like kind of like a shale kind of color and the sand itself kind of blends in really nicely too and there's like little dirt piles and stuff all over the place which makes it look a little bit more natural and more like minecraft uh, in general so these are the, the textures for the sand they turned out really good and uh, outside of that, if you are new to my channel, uh, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and we'll do more of these next week. Uh, I have some other stuff planned, so definitely tune in for that. Uh, thanks for watching. Peace out.